big goal today is to finish this unit. So there are three lessons left. There's this one, which is kind of a repeat of what we've done before, tangents and normals. Um, there is a higher order derivative note and one that requires graphing. So um, actually, let's call it sketching because we won't need graph paper for it. Um, all right, so tangents and normals. Everything we've been doing so far is related to the tangent line because the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, which you can then find the equation of the tangent line. Something we have done a couple of questions with is to do with normal. So a normal, the definition is the line that is perpendicular to the tangent line is called a normal line. Another word for normal or perpendicular or 90 degrees is orthogonal. So I again didn't make that up. So if I draw you a little doodle, and this is absolutely a doodle because I'm not using a ruler for my x and y axis. So if I've got some curve, and I think I used this before, and then I find a point on the curve, and here's another line that I'm totally freehanding, which is illegal. If I find a point on the curve, so let's say that point right there, I should be able to draw a tangent line. And if I find a line that is exactly 90 degrees through that exact same dot, I have found the normal line. In which case, because it's perpendicular, because it's orthogonal, because it's 90 degrees, it has a slope that is a re negative reciprocal to the slope of the tangent line, meaning negative, opposite sign, reciprocal, upside down. So both of those. It means finding the slope of the tangent first. So we've got a couple of examples here, three of them in fact. So some, when I give you an equation for this, it ranges from something that you might be super comfortable with, with something that you might not be as comfortable with, to in between, if you're in between on that one. So let's go back to the first one, which is a basic question, and I call it a basic question because there's no exponent, so it's not a power of a function rule, it's, there's no quotient, there's no product. It's supposed to be a decently easy question. So I'm going to write down y equals again, just so it's in my handwriting and I have some space. And then over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to take the derivative. So I'm going to call it y prime, even though I have the option of calling it dy by dx, or I could even call it m tan. So I'm taking the derivative, which is 4x minus 2 minus 0. And the question says, and you have to read questions very carefully to see what they're giving you. It says find the point, so it's singular, the point on this curve where the slope of the tangent line is 2. So here is the slope of the tangent line, this little formula right here. So I should be able to take 4x minus 2 and equal it to the slope of the tangent line, which they're telling me is 2. And then, because it's linear, no exponents on the x's, I can take all my numbers to one side, all my letters to the other side, and I end up with an x value. Now, if I reread the question again, it says find the point. So I found half of the point. So for me to find the other half of the point, I'm going to have to sub it into y, not back into y prime, because the partner for x when you're talking about a point is y, because it's x comma y. So I'm going to take this x, and I'm going to plug it back in here. And do a little bit of bad mass. So 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 minus 4, and I end up with negative 4 for my y value. So now I actually have the answer to the question. Therefore, the point is x, 
comma y, 1 comma negative 4. And I am on to the next question. So, oops, not what I intended to do. That's what I intended to do. And now I am going to do this and take a little break for my hand, even though that's quite pathetic because I'm only five minutes in. Okay, so this question is find the equation of the normal line. So in order for me to find the equation of the normal line, I have to go through a bunch of steps. Step one, find the derivative so we can find m tan. We can also sub in x equals negative 1 to find the real m tan, and then we can do the negative reciprocal to find the slope of the normal, which is m norm. Then, once we have that, we can do y equals mx plus b, because the question doesn't ask for the slope of the normal. It asks for the equation of the normal. So we have a bunch of steps to go through here. So you do have to read this, and you do have to read this very carefully to find out what it is that you're after, specifically, so you don't do too much work or too little work, and how to approach it. Um, the problem with this question is that this is going to take the quotient rule. So this time, just for kicks, dy by dx. And then I'm going to take the derivative using the quotient rule. So that is, and I'm not going to do the scribblies, I'm going to do the textbook version, meaning not, nothing off to the side, just keep going. So the derivative of the top, drop the 3, keep writing, make it one less, go inside that bracket, take the derivative of it, which is 4, and then don't forget to multiply by the original bottom. And because it's the quotient rule, it's a minus sign, and I repeat, but in the opposite direction. So drop the 2, keep writing, make it a 1, invisible or not, go inside this bracket, take the derivative, which is a 2, and then don't forget to multiply by the original top. And all of this is over 2x plus 3 to the 2 squared, which means 4. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh crap, I have to do all the factoring. Well, you can, but you don't have to. My recommendation is that you clean it up, meaning I've got monomials before my minus sign and I've got monomials after my minus sign. You at least clean that stuff up so that when you put in x equals negative 1, you have put it into a simpler version. So 12, 3 times 4, a bracket of 4x minus 1 squared, a bracket of 2x plus 3 squared minus 2 times 2 is 4, a bracket of 2x plus 3 to the 1, a bracket of 4x minus 1 to the 3, and all of this is over 2x plus 3 all to the exponent 4. And now that I've got that, I can take my x equals negative 1 and I can plug it in for all the x's. So it's going to require square brackets and round brackets for me to be neat. So x is negative 1. There's an x. Now it's negative 1. Here's another x. Now it's negative 1. Minus sign 4. Here's another x. Now it's negative 1. Here's another x. Now it's negative 1. And finally, in the denominator, there's the final x, and now it's a negative 1. So I'm going to do some of this in my head. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, minus 1 is negative 5 squared. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1 squared. Minus 4, there's, the ne there's 2 times negative 1 again, which is negative 2, plus 3 is 1, not squared. This is the negative 5, this time to the 3. 
and then over, that's negative 2 plus 3 is 1 to the 4. So I'm going to take out the calculator to do this, even though I could probably do it by scratching away on the side. This is just easier. So 12 times negative 5 squared is 25 times 1, which is itself. So that's 300. Minus. This is negative 125. Times 4. Times 1. And because there's two negatives in there, this is going to be a positive 500. And all of this is over 1 to the 4, which is 1. So that's actually a terrible M tan of 800 over 1. Ooh. So if I want to find a perpendicular slope to M tan, which is better known as M normal, it will be 1 over 800 but I need a sign change as well, so negative 1 over 800. So I have gone through the step of finding m tan, which was awful because it's a quotient rule, subbed in negative 1, which wasn't fantastic, but it was at least just bed mass. I've done the negative reciprocal, so I have my m norm, and now I need to do the y equals mx plus b. So that means I need an x, got it, an m, just finished finding it, and a y. So I don't have a y. So to find the y, I actually have to plug the x back into the y. You can't put, plug it into y prime because that's not going to spit out a y. You can't sub it into m norm because that's not going to spit out a y. You have to sub a value into the y equation to find a y. So it means square brackets again. So that's negative 5 cubed is negative 125. That's 1 squared, which is 1. So y is equal to negative 125. So down, 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 down. I have an x of negative 1 and a y of 125. Negative. So now I get to dig out my y equals mx plus b and use all this info to find the equation of the normal. So y is negative 125, m is this awful fraction, x is negative 1, and b is b. So that's negative 125 equals, that's a positive 1 over 800 now, plus b. So negative 125 minus 1 over 800 plus, oops, equals b. And that will end up being negative 185 and 1 over 800. So I need to figure that out as a improper fraction instead of a mixed fraction. So 125 times 800 equals plus 1. Ooh. 125. And it's negative equals B. So therefore... The equation of the normal line, line meaning y equals mx plus b, is y equals negative 1 over 800 x minus 100,001 over 800. Now just to go over something I've gone over before, there are some alternate answers. So one of the alternate answers is, because they're both over 800, you can write it all over 800. There's also 
So these are both considered general form. This is true general form. This is slightly adjusted. I'm going to dig out the green pen to do a little bit of work. So I'm multiplying both sides by 800, which on one side makes an 800 appear. On the other side, it means the 800 is no longer in the denominator. And then we have x's are positive, so x's are positive on the left. So there's x, there's y, there's the number. And then the slightly alternative version that. Okay, so that's that. That's awful. You can get some awful answers. Welcome to calculus class. Um, here is the last question. Okay, it's a relief for me to see this kind of equation as opposed to the product rule or the quotient rule. So f at x, dig out the blue pen. Don't even have to read this stuff personally. Take the derivative. You're going to have to read after that, so don't, don't think I'm not going to read it. But if I take this 3 and multiply it by 1 third, I'll have 1x squared and then minus 2x to the 1 minus 0. So that's the derivative. Now I have to read the question. So it says determine the equation of the normal line, so we're after y equals mx plus b again, but normal, that has a slope of 1. So what that's saying is that the slope of the normal line is equal to 1, which means the slope of the tangent line is the negative reciprocal. So we're going backwards, but the step is the same. So I'm going to take this 1, and I'll put it over 1, and then I'm going to turn that upside down, which you can't tell, and make it the opposite sign and make it cleaner. So there's the slope of the tangent, and this blue thing is also the slope of the tangent. So I can now set them equal to each other. I can't set the slope of the normal line equal to the slope of the tangent. They're not the same thing. So I now have 1x squared minus 2x equals negative 1. This is a quadratic, so I need a 0 on one side. So I need to pull my 1 over and change its operation, and now I need to factor. So x, x, I'm hoping it's factorable and we don't have to use the quadratic formula. So I need two numbers that multiply to be 1, not many options, that also make negative 2. So I actually have the same answer twice. Not that that matters, except that it gives me less work. So I end up with x is equal to 1. So if I'm starting my little list off to the side, for the equation of the normal line, my slope for the normal line is 1. My x for the normal line is also 1, total coincidence. I need the y for the normal line. So that means that I have to actually sub this back into the y, and the y is there. It's not here. This isn't y. This is y prime. So hopefully I can squeeze this in y is equal to 1 third times 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 7. So now I can move the board a little bit. So 1 cubed is 1 times a third. Whoa, so popular. Minus 1 minus 7. So that's actually negative 8 plus 1 third which is negative 24 plus 1 all over 3. So the y is negative 23 over 3. So I actually did that little 1, 2, 3 thing here. I put this over 1. I multiplied the two denominators together. I multiplied in this direction. I multiplied in this direction. I finished it off. So now I can add to my list and start my y equals mx plus b. So y, awful. 
equals m, hey, not so bad, x, not so bad, plus b. Negative 23 over 3 equals 1 plus b. Negative 23 over 3 minus 1, which is actually 3 over 3, equals b. So that's negative 26 over 3 equals b. So back to the original question to see if I've answered it. Determine the equation of the normal line. I have answered it, but I need a therefore statement. So therefore, my hand's cramping, the equation of the normal line, there is only one normal line at that particular point, is y equals 1x minus 26 over 3. So it's y equals mx plus b. Um, to make this look a little different, in case you want it to look different, you can make this a common denominator. I wouldn't say that that's an official answer. I would say that you might see that as an answer. And then you would possibly see the other version. That's not the other version, which is why it's in green. Um, this is a little bit different because we're pulling everything right this time. Because remember, you have to have a positive x value. So this 3y is going to come over. Minus 26 equals 0. So it doesn't matter where you have the 0. And there's also the option of 3x minus 3y equals the 26 would be on the other side as a positive 26. So you have this answer possible, this answer possible, this answer possible, this answer possible. One of those answers could be in the back of the book, and you have to adjust. It's not the, the book's job to adjust. It's your job to adjust. Sorry about your luck. Um, so here is the work from the book. Um, these are the same thing. So page 85 to 86, number 18, number 20, number 21, number 27, and then the A parts of 22, 23, 24, 25. So I wrote it like this in case you like to bulk it up or like this if you like it in numerical order. So that is today's lesson. Remember that you can always ask for